Good morning, everyone. Bonjour à tous. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning from Chiang Mai. Good morning. Yes, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah, thank you for your active participation. So <laughs> today, I think, although I said yesterday that we want to test the voice, but I think we don't have much time uh, because of the tight schedule and we also want to finish in time. So today, I think, so I will hand over to my colleague, uh, P. Diamond, to uh, facilitate and also to start with the agenda. So P. Diamond, please. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bonjour, Welcome, Monsieur. everyone, to the second day of the virtual training course. Alors, I would like to de... inform the programs of today. We will start with the wrap-up from the yesterday's session, moderated by Mr. Niwat Suwan Patana, and then Module 3. Stigma and okay, discrimination uh, measurement, monitoring and evaluation presented La by Dr. Kliang Kai, Kaitana Vipun Chai, and followed by Module 4 concept of 3 by 4 package and linkage uh, with CQI process presented by Ms. Neon Ario Thai. And next, Module 8. Roles of Office of Disease Prevention and Control, Ministry of Public Health in Support and Scaling Up Stigma and Discrimination in their respective area, presented by Mrs. Nim Anlong Thai Jalen. Are you ready for the wrap up from the yesterday session? I would like to invite Mr. Niwat Suwanapatana. He graduated Master of Arts in Social Development from Chiang Mai University, Thailand. He has experience in reproductive health and HIV AIDS for 30 years. He is the team member for curriculum development and trainer for training of trainers program for understanding and reducing HIV stigma, stigma and discrimination in health facilities. He is advisory board member, the Upper Northern the People Living with HIV AIDS Network. Uh, now, he stay at the Chiang Mai City, the north of Thailand. Please welcome Mr. Niwak. Organization in Thailand. Thank you, Kuntip Sukun. Um, hi, good morning, everyone. Are you hearing me? If you're hearing me, please say yes, so I can hear your voice. <laughs> si vous yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's good enough. Because we 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 are not well prepared. I have to confess to you, it's it's my first time of doing the training ah. online. So mostly I am no, no, familiar uh, with the meeting online. So this is my first time too. So maybe some kind of uh, problem virtuel. or challenges. But we'll, we hope that we will proceed to this. So be, be, before starting, I would like to bien. warning you to two things. Because today we need all of you to have two devices ready because the next um, session on measurement, you will have uh, to try Deux out the questionnaire online. Ah. So you need two Ou, devices uh, at least. Let... But if you don't have the device, the second device, um, the host will share you the URL. So you can use URL to do it on your computer or tablet. Faut, and um, uh, another thing aussi, is, I would like to warn you uh, that there's only 14 persons who finish the pre-test. So we need at least you to pre-test this, um, to, to finish the pre-test. Actually, in, in this morning, uh, in this time, at this time today. En fait, so on vous a déjà uh, for those who did not finish uh, yet, so please go back to do the pre-test too. Okay, I will have like, only seven minutes on schedule. So I will start with Gahu. Uh, we will minutes. use the, the Gahu. So I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that, but Dr. Sin will help you to 
to go to the, the same platform. Please, Dr. Sin. Uh, so I think uh, in the checkbox, there is a link that you can click on. And Let's then see. you yeah. can, yeah. I think there's a number uh, uh, sure. that you sure. have to Again, type in. 517-8320. I think if you don't have a two device, that might be some difficulty, but if you are using the laptop, I think you can manage it. But if you are using the mobile phone, uh, that will be difficult to uh, uh, narrow the screen or zoom and it's difficult. So it better we encourage to you to device. So if you have some difficulty, you can type in the checkbox that we can understand and how we can yeah, help. Okay. It seems like Thailand is the first team, the fastest yeah, team. Yeah, so only, only three right uh, now. So I will oh, also... Ça a l'air que les Thaïlandais sont les plus vite parce que les premiers quatre personnes sont tous Thaïlandais. Okay, Cambodia following up Laon, Cambodia. Okay, good. Sri Lanka, welcome. Bienvenue. Well, all passengers, this is your final call. Please proceed to the gate right now. Sin, oh, I am okay. in too. Okay, Anissa. Yeah, good. I had some difficulty to enter. That's yeah, okay for, for those who cannot. Maybe you, you, you are lucky for not joining this game this morning. <laughs> okay, then um, maybe you one can more. 12 right now we have. Yeah, uh, I think, uh, uh, Niwa, I think if you don't have time, please uh, continue. Okay, so for only 12, I'm okay with that. So I think can um, the other will be the observers, but you can join without typing. Um, I will ask you the first question, the, the only question for today, this morning, this, this early uh, beginning is um because yesterday we don't have time to ask this question for you i think we it's good for us to know Mais what hier, is your expectation nous I'll ask you. what temps. is the question what is your expectation for this workshop training workshop so you have a time a set of time to type in your expectation please type your answer please i uh, guess qu'est ce que votre we have two minutes for you que vous souhaitez obtenir de cette formation, vous pouvez uh, justement simplement écrire ou taper ce que vous voulez uh, de la session. For those who didn't join on the cannot join on the Kahoot platform, you can write it down on your own papers. Si vous n'avez uh, si even vous send it through the chat box. Uh, au site Kahoot, vous pouvez justement uh, écrire sur un sur une feuille. Your expectation for the training workshop. Please. Votre espérance uh, que vous souhaitez obtenir de la session. One minute left. Une minute restante. So when you saw a lot of word in 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 the your screen, just select like one word, click that word uh, uh, quickly before the uh, yeah this before ending the second. So just click one word and then it will continue. You will see a lot of work when you type in, and then you can click one only one word, any word you like. <laughs> Sorry, Ong from Myanmar, uh, you said uh, please bon catch the <laughs> We don't have time. Uh, sorry. sorry, but okay. Anissa from uh, Pakistan said put now uh, okay twelve submit and then one from the chat box. Okay, so we see it together. So, Alors, uh, okay, réponses. I will we have two minutes here. I will read through that. So, um, one of you said that we will learn more about SD experience of Thailand, how to manage and implement SD program, reduction program. Uh, nous okay. trions, uh, Second one is new experience to apply SD with other countries. The third one is understand more uh, about the situation of SD in Thailand. So, you can help us. Or this is from maybe from Thai people. Mettre, uh, mettre <laughs> and the, th the fourth uh, one is training or extend and strengthen knowledge. Oh, for my current job role and responsibility with HIV prevention program, we'll have the formation. opportunity to learn something new uh, from different people who have right, who have high positive. Okay, that's good that you, you expect to learn more, uh, de ma profession to your work, and you, you, you need uh, to learn more 
new Avec innovation le strategy VIH and develop training package to reduce SMD toward the HIV. I do hope this the next session will for some country will be your new innovation uh, to learn about um, how to do survey and this um, SMD surveys and online uh, survey strategies. So the next one is I want to I want to I want more knowledge and experience about Je HIV stigma and want to use knowledge from this training to my country. Également yeah, experience sur la like you learn and you would like to apply to improve knowledge about HIV prevention and ending HIV stigma and discrimination. Uh, okay, good. So we link the uh, stigma uh, with the prevention, learning more from everyone. So in every things, you, you <laughs> the, the, the next one is participants actively engage and enjoy the training. That's the good point. We have, we have to the enjoyment. Don't be stressed. Don't, uh, don't worry about your English. Me too. I'm, I'm always get an underscore above a uh, lower average for the English score. So don't worry, speak, just speak out. We will we'll uh, learn how to communicate and understand each other. So have fun, right? Fin and reduce stigma and discrimination and adding is I need to exchange experience with any country. Good, I don't know who right is, but please, at the time after session, you can share and discuss. We even you have different point of views. And from the chat form, um, Anissa from Pakistan said that at the end of the uh, course, we can understand the driver and the strategy to adopt and can, and can plan our pilot project. So if I'm, cours, I'm still on, have correct memory, I think Anissa mentioned yesterday uh, les, les with her smile said that she was surprised that she said she think about two drivers, pour but Thailand said that we have four notre, drivers. Uh, Am I right, projet de pilote. Yes, yes, you are right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today, the, the second session, you will learn more in detail about four key drivers. Okay, since because we are running out of time um, for my uh, link cap, but I just voilà. would like to spend only one mm -hmm. minute before Going back to Kun Kitsukun and then Dr. Green Kai to, to just recap some um, thank you for, for all people to participate in, in this um, first activities. At least we know Merci some of your expectations and we can see that how can we reach out to these expectations. Um, I, I will spend one more minute to just recap what I'm learned and it's my um, in my memory for yesterday from your participations. Um, from my note, the first one is on the session of Belize when when we talk about stigma, and some of you mentioned that stigma is a friend from Tanzania mentioned that stigma is negative action and behave towards people living with HIV. And Cambodia friends from Cambodia say that some key population have difficulty in access to health care services. Uh, après le Congo, mentioned about gender-based violence related to stigma discrimination. Uh, the people Friend from Pakistan uh, also mentioned about healthcare worker uh, fear of acquiring pays. HIV from taking care of clients, and um, also mentioned about people in community and workplace look down to God. people with, living with HIV and AIDS as they are behave bad things or they are sin people. They've so this is the kind of things that you mentioned about stigma. The, se the second one when uh, the, is the question from Pam and when you're asking about stigma and discrimination in the relation related to contact strategy and interactive. So Billy's coming and later and then answered that it's mean uh, uh, we create opportunity uh, for PRHIV uh, and AP key population to interact with general public or even though our healthcare facility staff and then or even though key duty bearers it's the the to create the interaction between these kind of two people to from two a side apart is to create an understanding and many and maybe finally come up with the intervention to reduce in uh, stigma and discrimination so I would talk more later on my part about um, voilà. community participations. So that is all uh, briefly about something that I catch up from yesterday. Sorry, I didn't um, have time for you to recap. So I finished mine, sorry, um, taking for 
four more minutes and going back to thank you for all of you again i would try to speak i would try to climb down myself and speak slowly later on okay so go back to you and then you can for, proceed to the next session thank you welcome to the next program Module 3, Stigma and Discrimination, Measurement, Monitoring and Evaluation, presented by Dr. Kriyan Krai Sithana Vibun Chai. He is graduated Doctor of Medicine from Chiang Mai University, Thailand, and Master of Public Health from University of California, Berkeley, USA. He is Associate Professor working for Department of Community Medicine, Faculty of Medicine, Chiang Mai University. He is also Deputy Director, Research Institute for Health Science, Chiang Mai University. Please welcome Dr. Kliang Kai. So good morning. In, in this session, I'm going to talk about a very important component of work related to HIV stigma. Je vais parler sur un thème qui est très important aujourd'hui. In this session, we will divide it into three parts. First, I'm going to give a presentation about this topic. And please feel free to ask any question in the chat box. The second part, I will demonstrate my data collection system, which is currently used in Thailand and neighboring countries. So in this part, I would like to ask all the trainees to answer their questionnaires online. So you need a smart device to connect with the internet to participate in this activity. After that, I will come for open and open for any questions you may have. For the first part, I would like to start the presentation which will cover five topics, which includes why we need to measure stigma and discrimination, what to be measured, how to measure pitfalls of Yes, and the measurements and first with the Thai experience and Thai example. Excuse me, Dr. King Kai, for interruption. Yes. I please uh, use your microphone closely because we cannot follow your voice. Okay, I'll, I'll try to speak louder okay. and closer to the microphone. Thank you. Measurement is essential for any health program, specifically for HIV related S and D. And there are two main reasons why we would want to measure HIV-related stigma and discrimination. First is to know, we call it to know your epidemic, meaning that to gain understanding about the situation of your local context. And second, to know your response. You would need to already have a program or intervention in order to measure stigma and discrimination for this reason. Actually, this is the approach that UNAIDS advised all countries on measuring any HIV births since 2008. For measurement S and D to know your epidemic, this is the first step to approach of your S and D problem. It will help get the baseline information on the extent and characteristics of the problems. And when measuring periodically in series, you can see the changes or trends of the situation. The results can be used to communicate with your stakeholders, to advocate for policy change, and budget needed for the intervention. It can be also used to decide the intervention for stigma and discrimination reduction and report to the international agencies. The second reason for S and D measurement is to know you to know your response. This is the extension of know your epidemic approach. You can use this when you already have yes, the reduction intervention program and you want to know its effects. This can be divided into two approaches. We can look at it as a monitoring and evaluation or 
is as a continuous quality improvement tool. For the monitoring and evaluation of a health program approach, monitoring refers to ongoing access assessment of progress of health program. It should be set up as part of routine program management. You can regularly monitor, monitor the progress and monitor the output of your intervention. Regular monitoring will also identify problems early so they can be corrected and improvements can be suggested along the way. For the evaluation, on the other hand, this refers to a systematic review or criticize the program outcomes and program impact. Evaluation is often performed at the end of the project. In conclusion, monitoring means are we doing things right? And evaluation, are we doing the right things? Another way of know your response is is use it as a uh, measurement as a tool to continuously improve your program or quality of the service. Or in our case, continuously reduce stigma. The session after this by Kundivat will focus on this issue. I think you may have heard about the quality cycle or PDCA cycle was sometimes called PDSA cycle. It was created by Dr. William Stemming. This cycle depicts the four main steps of program implementation, which repeat itself as a cycle. Four steps are P and D, do, C, check, or S, study and A, act. Our measurements of the quality side. For this continuous quality improvement concept, important S and D indicators will be measured regularly and the result are used feedback team to continuously improve the quality of the S and D reduction program. Next is what to measure. To know what to measure, you need to understand the stigma framework or how stigma operates in the society. This framework shows that how stigma works. First, stigma can happen or occur in variety of population and places, including general population, in families and peers, in PLHID population, in institutions and structures. This means that we can measure stigma in many circumstances. Stigma of part of key drivers that cause and facilitate a stigmatized process. They are called actionable driver or actionable facilitators because we can remove or modify them. This leads to marking the individuals or groups socially unacceptable behaviors and statistics. While the framework is specific to HIV stigma, there are also other related stigmas, which often co-occur with the with the HIV stigma. These two stigmas can or intersecting stigmas. This then lead to the manifestation of stigma because stigma manifestation. This thing 
มากมันสเตชันเดนอินฟลูเอนซ์อินฟลูเอนซ์ไฮส์บีเฮเวอร์สอินเวนชั่นแอนด์แอนเมดลีอินฟลูเอนซ์อินวิดูอินดิวิดูคุณภาพชีวิตไลฟ์เอชไอวีอินซิเดนซ์แอนด์เทรเวลเลนซ์วิสคอนซิเดอร์แอสอินแพคออฟเอชไอวีสติกมาอินแอดดิชั่นยูสติกมาแมนิเฟสเตชั่น Can also perpetuate or help mitigate the actionable driver and facilitator. Can they are key areas for intervention? Fill up and so the mission is. So we focus on these two areas. In this slide, magnify the two areas of interest. We can see that the key area for intervention and development and achievement for both drivers and manifestation. If we can decrease or remove these domains, we will be able to reduce the negative outcome and impact of HIV stigma. I could There are four of them. This one is lack of awareness that the act that people act stigmatize and discriminate people. Second one is fear of HIV infection, usually because of lack of proper HIV knowledge. The third one is negative attitude towards people living with HIV and key population at the risk of HIV. And the last one is lack of proper talk and policy. Stigma manifestations. These include, for example, perceived stigma, which is defined as a perception of the public stigmatizing attitude. Discrimination is the act of stigma. Sometimes we call experience stigma. Which treat a person or particular group of people differently, especially in the worst way, from the way in which we treat to other people. Anticipated stigma is anticipation of being rejected or discriminated against due to his or her own identity. Internalized stigma happens when we test the negative ideas of the public or stereotypes and apply them to themselves. And the last example is we call resilience. This is the opposite of the internalized stigma. This capacity to recover from difficulties, toughness means strength. So this, uh, so these are the main areas that we would like to focus on for the measurements and also on the intervention. There are groups of standardized questions that's used to measure these ideas. So we call them stigma domains. This table matrix show example on how we select stigma domains to be measured in different populations. Some domains are not appropriate, not making sense to measure in particular target group. For example, you cannot measure fear of infection in people who are already infected from HIV. But you can measure internalized stigma only in PR. HIV, but not in other group of population. Next is how to measure. Now we know the reasons to measure and what to measure. First, we need to determine the object of the measurement and decide measurement to serve the purpose of your program. There are four types of studies that can be Measure HIV, stigma, and discrimination. 
the first one is the quantitative quantitative studies or quantitative surveys. This is a standard way of measuring stigma and discrimination. It will provide figure numbers and trends. We will focus on this type of study after this. Second one is qualitative study. This when we use the technique, for example, in depth interview, focus group discussion. It is used to identify problems, used to decide, use the result to decide the questionnaire for the quantitative survey. Or after you have a result from the quantitative survey, you can use this technique to find the root cause of the problem. The third one is op direct observation. We can send our study staff to directly observe what actually happened, for example, in clinics or in the workplace. And the last one here is an exit, participant exit interviews. We can know immediate um, reaction, experience of the client before they forget about it. What step of the quantitative survey? They are actually the same as the generic cross-sectional quantitative studies. Usually we start with the stakeholder meeting to determine the goal and objective of the survey. And then translate the tools into your local language. You don't have to start from scratch. There are actually the recommended standardized tools to work from. And then finalize the tool. Then between the study methodology, we don't have time to go into details, but this is, for example, study size, population sampling, sample size, and method for data collection. We can usually pre-test for the tool and pre-test for the methodology to see if, if they are work. Then the data collection itself, data analysis. And data use, this include dissemination. How can be many ways to do this. Provide feedback to the local team for the one who need to know them. Use the result to decide the intervention, for example. This is uh, our experience. Kinds of lesson learned or pitfall of s and measurements. First one is personal bias. We have found that sometimes local staff who help on the conducting surveys with misunderstanding, but with good intention. They want the result to look good and introduced by us to the team during data collection. Poor methodology leads to poor and unvalid results. So please decide the study properly and execute it as planned. On many occasions, people just conduct survey but no action at all after that. No intervention, no nothing. Sometimes only just one survey and no follow-up survey. And under use of results, I think this happened even in, in, in Thailand in our situation. The, the results are used, but just very lightly was not worth the effort of the measurement. Sometimes the result is used in a negative ways. If we want to have it. For example, the result used to compare and blame each other, used to punish staff in the localities that have the uh, bad survey result, something like that. So it needs to 
uh, clarify at the beginning how to use the result in the positive way in the constructive So next is the our experiment. This, uh, this, this slide shows Thailand's national framework on measuring stigma and discrimination. So as you can see, we, we measure stigma and discrimination in different sectors, in general population, in key population themselves, uh, in the government healthcare facilities, in the healthcare facilities that led by key population, we call KPL. I think there will be a session about it. We conduct PRH stigma index, and we have we call event-based monitoring system for each population. Uh, have the specific objective that we talk. If you would like to have uh, more detail in any of this, please please ask further. So after this, we will focus on the government healthcare facilities, which is the quantitative survey. For this one, we developed as a Thailand National Surveillance and HIV Stigma and Discrimination in Healthcare Facilities. It started in 2013 by adapting the global tools to the Thai context. And then we have regular survey every two years. First round in 2015, second round in 2017, Third round in 2019, and currently the fourth round. Has been conducted, conducting at this time throughout the countries in 13 provinces, including Bangkok. You can search my name and look for this publication if you would like to learn more details about this development. This diagram shows how the data generated from the national surveillance system being used in Thailand. So every other year, every two years, after the result come out, we will set up a data analysis and interpretation workshop with all the stakeholders. People will discuss and gain more understanding on the result. The result then will be used to fill the gap in the intervention at the country level and also used as an input for the local intervention. We can also use this, the result of this surveillance to come up with a national estimate and report to the international organization. That's it for the first part, which is my presentation. Any questions? Yes, Dr. Twin Kai, there are one question. Thank you for your first part. There are one question in the chat box asking by Anissa. Anissa, back to you. You can ask by your own self, please. Seems like maybe she's not here right now, Anissa. So Anissa asked the question about um, what is the internalized and resilient stigma? I think, can you qualify? Okay, she's back right now. <laughs> no, no, I was here. Actually, uh, it's difficult to unmute and stop video ah, and start video. Thank you for My the question. My question was, uh, um, I, I'm sorry, I could not understand the uh, types of stigma which I perceive internalized and resilient. Okay. Actually, what are the are different the, types? Actually, they are the one of the many manifestation of stigma, and they are on the opposite side. Resilience is, is a good, good, good sign. Internalized stigma is the 
like a bad side. The synonym of internalized stigma is self stigma. So it's the same word, self stigma, internalized stigma. It happened when the people who live in SA perceive the, the stereotype in a negative way. The, the way the society look at the people living with HIV in a negative way and accept that that thought and have an internalized process back into their mind. It's like they accept the negative thought of the public and they agree with them that okay, HIV infected people is is a is a worthless, is a bad people cannot uh, have future, something like that. that that's because sales are not internalized. But for some other group of dead people, they just like them. From, uh, they don't agree with the public perception of SAV. They can uh, have a strong mind and take care of themselves. Some people even disclose themselves and act as a community leader among themselves. I hope this clarify a little more. From from your reaction, Alyssa, I think that you agree with him. You understand that you didn't unmute your microphone, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. understand. Okay. So it's mean like people press you down, but you disagree, you act up back. So it's the uh, internalized or self stigma and then you resilience, silence, you fight back. Yeah. Okay, any other question to Dr. Kren Glai about measurements? Yesterday, there are two countries from Laos and Sri Lanka mentioned about you also have your surveys in your country, your own country too. Would you like to share some experience with him? In Laos, you mentioned that um, on your survey, you said that um, it's indicated that fears of exposure to HIV from drawing blood from PRHIV. This is the, the, the thing that you um, uh, get from your survey and it's become an unwilling to care people living with HIV and AIDS. And Sri Lanka mentioned about 60% of PRHIV uh, confront, yeah? Uh, discrimination in health setting, something like that. So, would you like to share or uh, talk with Dr. Kim Wright, friends from Laos and Sri Lanka? Dr. Yes, Vino, sir. please. Yes. yes. Uh, we have conducted the first survey somewhere back in 2006. That was a focus group discussion among the people living with HIV. So they mentioned they uh, they have uh, there was a, a special uh, discussion guide. So they mentioned they had internalized or the perceived stigma, and also they mentioned they were majority of them were stigmatized at the healthcare setting. That is around roughly around sixty percent. Then we have conducted same survey repeat in two thousand. That is ten years later. And it shows the reduction of stigma, uh, especially uh, in the healthcare setting. But uh, after that, we don't have conducted any uh, such uh, general population and the workplaces, any stigma Thank towards you. people living it. Anything Those anything? things are not conducted in Sri Yes, thank you, Dr. Vino, for sharing your experience. 10 years, you already do it. Okay. So, any. Any idea from Lao, colleague, you'd like to share? Or I, any other person? Uh, just uh, for Laos, we have like a, a fifth, six, uh, six, uh, five Laos for the survey, like a first round in 2018, and the second round in 2019, third round in, uh, fourth round in 2020. And we also use the rate cap from Thailand too. And for, for the fifth round, due to uh, some reason that we cannot use the red cap, we use the paper, paperwork. And then it's hard to entry the data 
is used is take time. And for the last survey, for the for the uh, sixth round, we use the Google form, Google platform, and now we are doing uh, we are doing the survey. And for the the variable that we get from, like uh, worried about the getting HIV when we don't, don't bring but from the people living with HIV. For the first round, it's going up like a 36% and it's going down until the, the third round. After that, it's going up again in the fifth round. Yes, like that. <laughs> okay, thank you. So it seems like they are going up and down, depends yes. on when times change, right? So, but one thing that Dr. Glenn Guy mentioned about the challenges is how to maximize useful of this kind of measurement or surveys because it put a lot of efforts. So I think it seems right now we don't have any kind of question, just only sharing experience. Dr. Glenn Guy, and you would like to proceed to the next step or would yes. you like to say something? Yes, Thank please. You. Thank you. Uh, now I would like to demonstrate, demonstrate the, the online data collection system, the real-time data analysis and real-time result presentation. This is actually the, the one that our participant from, from Lao has mentioned earlier using the, we call Red Cap online data collection system. Now I would like to ask all the all trainees to use the smartphones to do the, the QR codes and scan this QR code. Please, please use this one on the screen right hand. Please do not scan on the one on the handout that sent. This one is the, the update one. After you scan that QR code, it will bring you to this uh, page. And just then click next page. And try to answer the question according to the, the actual, uh, to, to, to the, your truthful knowledge or your feelings. So we can have a, a good result to discuss after this. So please go ahead and use your, can be a smartphone or can be tablets. And then try to answer the, the questions. We will discuss about the question and the result later. Thank you. If you use the personal computer, you have to type this on, on the essay you have. And you have to repeat that you please scan this one, not the one that we sent earlier. If you have any questions during the Answering the question, please type in the chat box. I'm sorry, Dr. Green, right? Please. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I will confirm that uh, we need to complete all the question as a way uh, in this link, right? Uh, you can skip, skip okay. some question if you don't want to. And have thank to you. answer all. Okay, thank you. It says that you are not a participant for the survey. For me, it is not working. It says that you are not a participant for the survey. Really? That's strange. Could you please log out and, and go, go back in again? Uh, how about how about the others? Do you do you see the same message as our Pakistani participant? Or 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 there? Or is okay? As you can see on the screen that. We have set up the system that so that we can monitor the progress of the survey. Right now, there are 17 people 
uh, fill the data into the system. Three already complete and 14 in incomplete. And these are the basic characteristics Let's see. gender and status of the, of the patient names. And now I refresh the page and the complete is up to five now. So we will wait a little bit for most people to complete the survey and we will look at the result together. Well, from the survey right now, sorry for interruptions. Seems like we have children under eight, five years old right now. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> That's make fun, right? You say that you have to enjoy the, the, the training. So this is funny. Probably, probably the kids are uh, the children of the participants. Must be a daughter because she is female, five years old. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe he is a male, but he pretend to be female and say that he's five years old. So from the screen right now, Dr. Green Guy Wai and the other participants still filling the form. Um, are there like uh, general, in general, are there literally that some of the the person who answered the question, the questionnaire didn't mention about their genders or their age? Is it okay? Uh, this, this questionnaire is for the government staff, so it's not, not happened mm -hmm. yet, I think. Okay, so most mostly people, people will feel happy all. To, yeah, most yeah. people happy to record their gender. Okay, so for the basic, it means for the basic information, we also re receive basic information from the, the, the um, person who answered the question. Right. Okay, I think we, we should now look at the result. I'm sorry for, for some of the participants that cannot access the survey. I'm not sure why, maybe some kind of internet problems. But uh, this system, as I said, that it used, currently used in, in the country and also in, I think in Laos, in Vietnam, in, Philipp in the Philippines also. This is the real-time summary report that the system created. You can have the average age. Then the, the professions. This is what I mentioned as a domain, right? Fear of HIV infection. That the distributions of the choice. We can look at each the answers of each question individually. We can look at a uh, composite indicators. In this case, the system combine the people who have little worry plus worry and plus very worry into into one figure and see if anyone who have some level of worry in at least one of the question we put it in the numerator so for the uh, for the seven participants who complete the survey there are three people account for 40 three percent that worry to at least one of these three. That's the way we we ask the system to 
to compute the variable for us. So the application of the opposite infection, the application about attitudes so people living in SAV. In this case, there are uh, third, from the 13 people, there are 12 of them accounted for 92% that have at least one negative attitude towards people living with HIV. Fifty percent had uh, at least one of the avoided fear of overprotecting oneself. I am not going to go into all the details, but you you can see that this is the actual question that we use to ask the health staff. Observe discrimination, asking about the. Uh, Observe discrimination among key population. And the system will show the result of the composite indicators as a table and also as a as a chart here. So I at and easy for the, for the staff to can immediately use the result after the survey. We also have this system to ask the experience of the clients, people who live with HIV. And we do this every two years in, in 13, 13 weeks. So, I'm not sure you have any any of the participants have questions or comments about the questions themselves or about the system. Any questions, comments, observation? We still have time. When you mentioned yesterday that uh, mostly people from health facility are fears of acquiring HIV, but from these surveys, you can see that uh, the highest one is the attitude, negative attitude towards people with HIV, right? Seems like normal or usual, uh, like in Thailand, don't know what other countries. Any thought from Tanzania? Timor-Leste, Iran. Oh, oh, okay. So uh, okay. I was I was wondering if this the if this results the results of the previous survey we did as participants or the the one that was done in um, Thailand because I I was wondering if it is ours. It seems we even. Uh, even as we are having the negative attitude towards the <laughs> the uh, HIV patients, so uh, surprise, thank right? Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you for the last turn from Tanzania. You mean for this domain, right? The negative attitude, right? Yes, sure. So for our participants today, is ninety-two percent have at least one of the four negative attitude to the patients. For our survey for the Thai health staff, with the sample size, sample size of more than 2,000 samples throughout the countries, and for the three rounds and two years apart from each other, it's actually very close to this speaker. It's about 88%, eight, something like that, very close to, to what we, we have here. But this figure can be misleading because it, it, it combines the four, right? If we look at the, each patient, it can be uh, more meaningful. Like if you look at which one? Most. 
PLHV do not care that they could infect other people. The system combined uh, agree and strongly agree as agree, right? So for this patient, it's only how much? Less than 20%. This one is like five percent. But this one is like twelve twelve percent, twelve percent. But when they combine all all patients is at least twelve people that answer agree to just one of this question. So it comes to ninety two percent. something like that. But the, the, the actual figure of the country is quite high also. It's almost 90%. So thank you for the question. So when you take a look at that, um, the four question that used to clarify negative attitude, it's mean like some of us agree with some of these four questions. But the, the measurement is like, um, uh, uh, the, the survey is like a bird's eye views. So we need to explore more why people think or agree or disagree with that things, those things. So when do we have time or room for them for explanation, share, discussion, we learn more about that. So people might unaware of their negative attitudes or people might intense but what but with the the sharing and discussion they will learn from each other learn perspective different perspective and may change but this is happens this is from your your 17 participants who just try out this questionnaire can dr Tung Klai, there one question in the chat box said that um, is can this questionnaire be adjusted according to the context of the healthcare facilities Yes, yes, of course. That's actually what we recommend in every country is to, to you should not just copy and paste all the questions. So you can 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 actually adapt for the local context. Okay, thank you. So it seems like they are friends from Galaxy out of our world, Galaxy A elevens type it in French. So can interpreter, can, can you help us, please? I'm not sure what is, it is a question or what? Uh, which question is, uh, okay, another question, um, Dr. Uh, Quinn, I, he, he said uh, he cannot speak. Uh, okay, that's only, okay. thank you for your participation from out of the world. Galaxy A11, how far is it from the world? Um, Dr. Quinn, I, um, the other question from Umanat from Thailand is which question is important to keep? So she asking. Which, which domain? <laughs> you asked about the negative attitude, right? Umanat, can you clarify what you intend your, to ask? Do you mean all the questions or some question in some specific area? Yes, please. Uh, um, is, I mean, all uh, 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 of question. Or, or topic, uh, we we should to give give a uh, question in this questionnaire. Okay, thank you. So I mean for the whole question set of questions oh, like eighteen. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Actually, it it depends on the the purpose and objective of the team of the project. But we come up with this questionnaire. Actually, the 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 original one is is longer than this. Like many more questions, I think it's 50 or 60 questions. And we have a group discussion, we have a consultative meeting, and then and then cut, cut and keep only the important one. And I think uh, it's not it's not long at all right now because it's only take less than 10 minutes for the health staff to complete. So I'm, I'm not sure we should, should make it shorter than this. 
because when we set up a survey, it's quite use quite a, a lot of effort to conduct and run the survey. So in my opinion, this is quite a, a short one already and measure all the important component, important domains, both the drivers and also the manifestations. So if possible, I would keep all the domains, but adjust the questions according to the local context. Okay, so we come to the last minute. Right now, Dr. Glengai, do you have any last words to say? Uh, many, many things? Just, just, no, just thank you for, for your attention. And if you need any assistance or would like to discuss more about the measurements and would like to have uh, help or uh, have a more convers conversation about this, please let me know. I would be happy to do that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, um, Dr. Quinn. I can everyone you have your screen and then you can you clap your hand use your, your clap hand size skin or, or even yeah from your video okay for say thank you to dr green guy okay thank you and thank you all for your participation too so i would like to mention here that we still have a room for measurements for your if you have questions and um ideas or thought would like to share with uh, Dr. Green Clyde. We uh, arranged the module nine, then we have a room for talking about measurements so we can use that um, day later, uh, the last, almost the last day to, to talk in detail about the um, measurement again. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't open my video. So thank you Dr. Green Guy again. And then um, that's fine. Um, friend from Myanmar that you said you have internet problems, so you come in and out. That's fine, that's fine. We we waiting for you. Okay. So go back to you, Kun Tip Sukon, please. Mm. Thank you, Dr. Green Clay and Mr. Niwat for the next program, module four, concept of three by four package and linkage with CQI process presented by Miss Neon. Ari Yothai. I would like to introduce Ms. Neon Ari Yothai. She is graduated bachelor in nursing science, sociology and anthropology, and master of science in infectious disease, Mahidol University, Thailand. Now she is a social worker working for Division of AIDS and STI, Department of Disease Control. Please welcome Miss Neon. สวัสดีค่ะ uh, Thank you for uh, MC. Uh, I'm a representative of the SND team of the A division. Today I'm going to share our experience on SND uh, in Thailand, SND reduction in Thailand. May I share slides uh, for you? Okay, uh, yesterday uh, I attend with uh, Dr. Thwisap, uh, uh talk about, uh, about the strategy or some concept of T by 4 and I review for you for short review. This slide show Thailand is committed ending is by 2030 under the mission together to ending AIDS in Thailand, considering of human rights and gender equality, with a strategy is normalized HIV and capacity building of individuals, family, community levels, uh, which arise protection mechanism. There are three main interventions that we will talk about later. S and D are underlying factor highly access to HIV test services and the late entry of HIV treatment, which might obstruct the country to meet the ending goal. The by 2015 from SND National Survey showed that the healthcare provider had high stigma and the people live with HIV are also highly stigmatized 
This is a slide uh, show for an exchange framework to reduce S&D reduction by 90% must be done under two goals simultaneously. This is a uh, uh, sub also inform you. I will short review for you. Uh, we have the two goals to promote understanding and reduction on S of S&D with rights protection, which management in for past as follow. Social and policy en environment, public communication, normalized history, and provincial policy driven about organization and network, including strengthening health care facility and other organization, we set up and support provincial mechanism for right protection. For individual, we can we said about the capacity building of people live with HIV and keep up. For MNE, we development of SND surveillance and database on right protection. All of this will be done within the context about policy, budget, social value, mechanism for HIV and human rights protection and others. This slide show key interventions, T by four package. SRP or Cell Sigma Reduction Program, Crisis Response System, and National Survey where they are involved. This is a T by 4 packet intervention for HIV stigma free in health facility with continuous quality improvement or CQI or QI. The T is a T level, T levels of intervention with healthcare facility. One individual intervention uh, with emphasis through training, S and E learning is now is uh, very suitable with uh, COVID pandemic now. Or for cut or small group learning, and then for the uh, system health facility structure with CQI activity. This is to improve policy and health services through QI activity by two key teams. The first team is the administrative committee. It's responsible for uh, formulating policy guidelines to reduce S&D in the hospital and progress monitoring meeting and summarize the performance every uh, four months. About working group or champion team is responsible for data collection, both baseline and post-intervention or so long term. Then select the big problem or issue or relevant departments for facility operation plan, establish appropriate hospital policy, and also case conference for service and system QI. Establish, develop, operation, and practice of HIV in healthcare facility without stigma and discrimination for continuous team meetings for at least two or three months. The last level is the linkage with the community level, including listening voice of clients, empowerment, self stigma network, collaborative uh, with the community keep up and civil society organization. After implementation that personnel or staff at healthcare facility has a better understanding of S and D related to HIV. Each hospital have developed their guideline to prevent and reduce S and D exception to separate bed in the delivery room cancel or stop the writing of symbol on the OPD card or profile indicating HIV status. This is a national scale up of s and reduction in health facility. In 2017, a pilot project of T by 4 approach was launched in six hospitals of T provinces. And the next year, we expanding with QI integration to more than 50 hospitals and also 
start working on SRP cell reduction program and crisis response also and then we uh, expand for more than 100 hospital uh, until now but uh, we have big problem for the 19 co for the covid-19 pandemic that's why uh, this year we expand only five hospitals and only uh, three hospitals in SRP. This is a framework of S and D C Q I. This is a uh, you know and you remember this is a three by four package that we talked uh, about this before, and for for sustainable we are planning for to add or integrate it uh, with the DSC or DC specific certification for QI activity with the hospital accreditation in institute for stigma free with CQI under performance monitoring S and D indicators clinical outcomes and QI coaching. This is an S&D CQI management structure. It's a network collaboration with central level and local level. In central level, we have the working group by Dr. Tuisap and QI activity by doc, uh, about the HA uh, hospital accredit by Dr. Shinin and work with the uh, S&D reduction training and coaching with uh, Mr. Niwat, uh, Division of AIDS, and FAR, is this an NGO, and have the S&D measurement with Dr. Kienkai. This is, uh, we have the coaching for QI and have monitoring technical support for the provincial health office and hospital in the local level. This is a summarized for project implementation for, Q, for uh, QI. Consisting of two parts, preparation, consisting of curriculum development, Training of tenor, measurement tool, and for the implementation phase, we have uh, follow for two uh, for four steps. The one, uh, if, if if you remember, is is the is is the same concept of uh, T by four package. But this is for expand and C for project implement. This is uh, the first step, pre-intervention assessment to know the S and D situation in hospital before intervention. Uh, by baseline assessment, assessment data, they will know, they must know S and D situation in their hospital before uh, training activities and then uh, the tr uh, we training in healthcare worker to identify the, I the issue for intervention planning to make a hospital call team to do and solve and the baseline as as assessment from the training we will guide them for the QI activities. For QI activities, uh, to improve with respect, respecting to clients, rights, and healthcare worker happiness. The last step for post-intervention assessment, they will know the S and D situation in hospital after intervention and doing against for long term for sustainable. 
the central level is the same as uh, the previous slide. We, uh, the central level will be technical support, coaching and monitoring with the regional level and also monitoring at site. About the hospital and provincial health office to uh, do activity. This is a, a, the slide show for the activities in the prepared state, prepared phase. Uh, we start for the ex, uh, for the we start for the T by four activity with the ten activities, training course, and then we revise for five activity with the uh, CQI. This is the uh, activities for training with the healthcare worker. With the cover of departments provide a service for people living with HIV, such as OPD, emergency room, lab, finance, or labor, and ARV. By empowerment, discuss data and appreciate about service. This is the, the live group for exchange the share and share experience and share solve and problem. This is the S and D survey. After intervention, after training, uh, we train them for know about S and D issue and loose cost analysis and for solution with responsible unit or person. We have the age issue uh, such as separate bed. But now they they no separate in the labor room or use symbol but they now cancel symbol or stop symbol for indicating of HIV something like that this is an accomplishment it's an SQI activity the hospitals are divided into three levels Beginning level, there are 22 hospitals had done only one activity, only training. For basic level, 19 hospitals has done only two activities, uh, training and issue report. The last, the last one for seven hospitals for advanced level has done completely three activities, uh, training, issue report, and applying CQI activity. For two levels, to add this s and issue, eight issue that we talked later, that, that, that we talked before. Uh, under method for documentation, uh, storing, telling from hospital, lesson learn, telephone, and like group. This is an uh, example for Pohn Pisai Hospital. They are doing QI activities. After activity, the result is the change in service regulation in healthcare quality. Staff understand more about HIV and S and I, S and D. They know they cancel or no last cure for dental and for surgical treatment. 
no separate zone except uh, GB and respiratory syndrome, no separate medical equipment, and more carefully about verbal and nonverbal when providing service. After implementation, example for uh, 48 hospital either is the start for CQI linkage. A T-stage competitive service, baseline, post-intervention and long-term. It was found the 10 in S&D among healthcare provider was decreased. At the same way that S and D among people live with HIV was the case too. Uh, in forty-eight hospital, this is a S and D national survey in health facility comparing every two years. Two thousand fifteen, seventeen, and nineteen. It was found that the cell stigma and also this cause of HIV status in people live with HIV are increasing. The next step, we have more tasks, more working uh, for S and D reduction. We will plan and create about the public media for working for working place for workplace for academic and development of S and the e learning for medical and nurse students. Expand T by four package a course in Thailand. Coaching uh, 100 hospital team for refreshing S and D CQI activity because uh, it's interrupted for the COVID pandemic. Linkage with community, including community service organization, development of SND CQI implementation manual, uh, both keep up and TV and also workplace and academy. And the last, the integration of quality work such as CQI, DSC, and healthcare network accreditation for sustainable. This is an SND innovation that you that you will learn. Uh, later from uh, from this course. This is a T by 4 packet that we talk about today. And S and D e learnings for health staff. We will talk about uh, the next Wednesday. And CIS system also cell stigma reduction program for, for healthcare worker, we hope Thailand is ending is with S and D by two thousand and thirty. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kunion, for uh, uh, in detail presentation. Uh, Kunion is bring us at the country levels go to. Uh, intervention from um, starting from measurement uh, under the concept of three by four, starting from uh, uh, measurements to implementation and scaling up, go further on the continuous uh, quality improvement. So there is a question, one question here for you, um, Kunion, it's about the challenges of implementation on the three by four. What is what is the challenges, the most challenges for implementations and are there any future recommendations? Uh, 
yesterday um, some also asking uh, limitations and Dr. Teresa also okay. respond some, but from your point of view, for the implementation of the three by four, what is the most challenges? It is uh, the most challenges is uh, expand uh, under the COVID pandemic because uh, today, uh, this year, we plan to expand for the 70 hospital for T by four and uh, Cell Sigma for 13 province. But uh, uh, most of hospital is very busy because uh, they will done with the COVID-19 also. And then we solve the problem by to get the uh, project for the one for the one model for one side. Uh, if you if you remember the T by four package, we have the linkage with the cell stigma and community and uh, this year we have for expense for T project uh, T by 4 SRP and CIS uh, we just uh, meeting with the regional level to solve this problem by uh, by shoot the uh, the hospital in the province that did the T by four before and to expand for the SRP and CIS together for one model for one page for one province and uh, now we just try for we just start to try for. Uh, one province, uh, Songkha province, uh, and now we, we, we uh, some uh, originian has uh, agreed with me for uh, for decrease uh, the work and add work together for one project for one uh, for one performance in the same time, right. Okay, I'm not sure what um, you agree with, uh, um, okay with her response, but she mentioned, I think that as a point of view is about um, as a project manager to expand is the most challenges. So because um, in, the, in the implementation of the, let me add some, in the implementation of the three by four, the one activity is a participatory training and learning. So we will talk about it to, for tomorrow. It's, it's a physical, um, it, under this um, circumstance, we cannot do uh, physical uh, in-person training. So it's a difficult part of that. So it may be related to, um, the question from Ongoko in the chat box about how much or how uh, how do we believe in our project long term results? So, but but before let's go on to that, are there any questions from the or comments from from other participants? Let's see. We I try to manage the time. How much do we? Okay, Anissa. Can I comment on this? Okay. Yes, please. Um, for me, the most challenging part of um, all this or any project related to stigma and uh, discrimination uh, reduction, uh, HIV is not a priority in the majority of the countries. This is because of, uh, and mostly in resource poor countries, because the cost estimation they only do with the hospital cost, uh, with the cost of uh, giving medicine and everything. But they forgot the cost when these patients get admitted in the hospital and the hospital have to uh, manage the cost per day of their inpatient care. So for me, the most important stakeholder is the government and the most challenging part is the HIV is not the priority. And the second thing about this is that the government usually listens to data and we do not have data. A baseline data is not available. So the most challenging part for me would be to have a baseline data so that you can advocate uh, the policy makers to make policies which can uh, be implemented in the hospitals and then definitely all the training programs, it's not an individual job. 
uh, it should be in the environment of the hospital and uh, it should be part of the system and the culture. So then it will work. <laughs> Are you a doctor or a strategic person? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but anyway, thank you for your for your comments. I think I agree with that. So, I'm, I'm, I'm a practicing physician, uh, and I'm working with the largest elderly care hospital in Bangalore. Uh, that is a public hospital, and because of the public health background, I also work with the Ministry of Health. So, I know the mindset, how they um, hmm. keep the thing, how they follow. Okay, good. Thank you. So, I think um, from your from putting on presentation, you can see that we start with the with the situation, like like uh, Anissa mentioned too, that we we bring the evidence to the country levels. So for the measurement, we start with the two pilot since the early, very early, almost ten years before, to bring uh, how to measure stigma, and say that it's it's important in Thailand. So with the two pilots. Uh, um, um, 10 years pilot really early for the survey and followed by we start with the implementation later on with six hospital sites and luckily that um, um, the drivers or the method that we use at the implementation is alongside with the, the way that we measure that so we use key for four key drivers so we can write that 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 is uh, help Thailand to go uh, move forward to, but the, the challenges is how to expand. Like if you can see the information from Kuni on said that we cover around hundreds of hospitals, but we have like almost 2,000 hospitals in Thailand. So what is the coverage that we do, do we need to, to do? So it's a kind of strategy. So we come up with others, other strategies like e-learnings or learning it's online, it's maybe reduce the qualities in deeper, but it's expanded the coverage. So things like that, so coming up. So and the other things, other thoughts from, from participants? So it's depend on you, right? When you mentioned about question can, can be ap applicable? Yes, it's depend on the local text, local context. And even what Anissa mentioned about if HIV is not a priority in your countries, so it might come up with some area, some specific area in, in your physical area that you can uh, launch these kind of things. It's, it's depend on you to apply. So uh, we have like 20, 25 minutes, 20 minutes from here to, to the, the, the next sessions. So can I finish with this? Uh, I will start my my part when when Funion mentioned about um, three by four the, the 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 level three is about linkages to the community. So if you allow me, I will spend only um, not for so long time to talk about uh, community linkages. So can I will think I will share my slide by my own self. Try okay. So I think can you see that? Okay, this is a. Uh, Community participation in stigma and discrimination reduction in health access. Since you may already guess that I'm not a medical staff, I'm not a healthcare worker in, in the hospital. I'm, I'm coming from communities. I'm working as an NGO for almost 30 years. So I was invited to join since the early beginning of the starting in the SMB reduction as a, for providing a perspective from community to develop the measurements. Followed by the the um, in, implementations. So uh, again, you may already familiar with these things, but I would like to mention you here is about this is three levels. The level that we, I will focus on is about the linkages to the communities with the four key actionable drivers. We start with the measurements on the baseline and inline collections. So bring down from the, the country levels to the hospital, let the hospital doing their measurement by, by, your own, by their own self because lots of challenge. The first challenges is when we approach the hospital and they say that now we don't have stigma and discrimination here. But when, the, when they did the survey and the result of the evidence shows that there are some stigma and the discrimination happens in that hospital, it's still, it's a good strategy to encourage or in, involve the hospital 
staff into the implementations. So at the system level, we start with the measurement and then end up with the measurements. But at the individual levels, like we make me on mentioned that we implement the the um, sharing and learning this uh, activity. So I would talk in detail more for tomorrow at the demonstration mo modules, how difficult or how challenging or how fun of this implementation. But here you can see the e-learning too. This is uh, another strategy to, to expand the coverage. But what I mentioned here, will be mentioned here about is about this. So, but before I go into that, um, I'll, I'll, my slide have only six or seven slides, but before that, um, I would like to start with the question from your own, from your point of view, said that um, when I talk about communities in the stigma and reduction in health facility context, what do you think about? I would like to hear some voice from you. When we talk about community, what does it mean for you? Community means all the um, stakeholders, like religious leaders um, in countries, like mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the NGOs, uh, the uh, common groups of uh, people who are living with HIV, uh, mm -hmm. if they are from the community welfare rehabilitation centers, okay. and uh, I think politicians too, because they make the policies. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well. Okay, it's from, from the community that you you give an example, it varies, right? And we can categorize in the levels too, right? The, the most person who have close contact with the, the hospital is PLHIV and themselves out of, out of the healthcare worker, right? So it's the PLHIV key populations or the clients, and then the other who live in the communities uh, the next level you mentioned about the um, policy makers. So this is a community. So it's mean communities mean various sectors, right? So any other additional comments or thoughts about communities? What is communities in Timor Leste means? Sorry, so when I share my slide, I didn't see the participant or the participant. <laughs> Okay, so, so, okay, if we follow from what um, definition that um, Anism talked about communities, so when we do stigma reduction in health facility, it's been like in your hospitals. So I would like to start with the first question, why and how important it is to involve communities in the stigma reduction in your health facilities. Again, go back to you. Any ideas about um, how important it is? Start maybe start with Thailand. Therefore, for participants from Thailand, are there any thoughts about how important it is to involve communities? I think they are important um, to know what are their expectations. Okay. And, and uh, uh, what will be the, um, there are um, communities who are uh, antagonizing each other. Mm -hmm. so have their concerns and uh, definitely to address them before implementing any plan. Mm -hmm. Actually handle them. Okay, expectations and input from them will help us to understand how can we reduce uh, stigma and reduction in, in the hospital. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Any other ideas? Uh, in, in addition, maybe in addition to what she has said, uh, involving the community also helps to bring a sense of ownership to the community that this uh, SD reduction is not just for uh, for ours. It's not for the healthcare centers. It's also for the community. Mm -hmm. So it's bring also the sense of ownership. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So that for me, it's bring your answer, your response, create the the idea about uh, various community that is a mentioned to sense of ownership to to reduce the stigma in the hospitals. So any other thoughts? Uh, to have uh, their experiences. 
and yeah. to know aspects which they tell you about uh, you are unaware of. Yes. To hear about, the, to learn about their experiences, right? And if you remember what uh, Bill is, um, mentioned yesterday about interaction between providers and um, recipients or clients, interaction or conversation about that will create an understanding what happened in their life. So what experience stuff, what stigma discrimination did they experience in the hospitals? So then what is their, if they have a kind of sense of safe space, sense of ownership, they might come up with some recommendation or some thought, or some idea to how to resolve or how to reduce the stigma and reductions. So from Thailand, oops, seems like my slide, okay. As and clients, so I'm, I, just, I just briefly hear is as and clients is about um, if you involve the uh, communities as a client of this hospital, no matter there are people living with HIVs, they are risk of getting HIVs, or they are members of the, uh, they are family member of people living with HIV, but they are client of the hospitals. If they come and share and talk with you, you have to listen to the different opinions, perspective, experience, and what is the impact of the, the stigma discrimination in the hospital that impact into their life. And is when we try to access, uh, to achieve the goal of 95, 95, 95, I put the, the, the last, the fourth 95 down there in my slides, I mean, uh, lots of community voice mentioned that it's not just only um, pre 95, but the fourth 95 is mean quality of life. It's mean, if you help them to become healthy, but the stigma and discrimination related to HIV are also impacting other dimension of their life. So you may, you may have to consider or help them to consider how to solve the other dimension in their economics, in their job, in their educations. So it's mean the, fourth, the meaning of the fourth 95. So the challenging to achieve that is to include them. If you didn't have a spaces to include them, you didn't have a chance to listen to them, to experience, you would not know about that. But this is the levels of communities that mean the, uh, the clients of your hospitals. But if you mention about more others, other communities uh, definitions like um, NGOs, groups, or even though the peer groups of people living in HIV and AIDS, peer groups of the people who use drug, peer group of the sex worker, you will have to involve them more in other kind of activities. So for that questions, I would like to go back to the second question. How can community involve any the other ideas? How can community involve? Seems like a silence here. I saw Sin Tu, you're smiling. You have any ideas? How can community involve? Uh, Anissa? I, I, I want to say that, for instance, okay. if you have some committee, it should have the representation from those uh, community groups. Uh, the okay. administrative committee, like you have mentioned, the uh, uh, SND committee. So they should have a representation in that. Uh, you should arrange uh, conferences, uh, meetings with them. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. A meeting with them, talk with them. Okay. Any other strategy to involve communities? Seems like they are chat box, people talking in chat box. Uh, for instance, we have signed a memorandum of understanding with certain NGOs. So they can take care of our patients uh, when they are unattended by their family and they are abandoned. So okay. they bring patients themselves, registered patients, they improve them sometimes and other things. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, okay, on Gogo, -go, raise your hand, please. Open your mic, turn off your mic, turn on your mic, please. On Gogo, -go, seems like we lost him. Okay, on Gogo, -go, you raise your hand, right? Yeah, okay. Can you turn on your microphone and speak? 
Sorry, Uncle Go, we cannot hear you. <laughs> it's difficult effort for today. You're trying a lot. Anyway, if you still would like to make comments, you can write it down on the chat box. Yes. Umanat from Thailand, you said, can you speak? You mentioned things in your chat box. Seems like Umanat have don't want to speak. Let other people hear your voice. Okay, Uncle Go mentioned about we should not let the projects only on the paper. Yes, I agree. Sometimes we, we, we sign agreements or we write it down that we, we involve community, but it's just only on the paper. It's not happened in the real life. And people here in the chat box mentioned about um, invite, involving NGO in education, providing education about stigma and discrimination on HIVs, I guess. And then find community leader, make them feel important and invite them to work together. That's good. Giving health education about HIV to community and problem solve s and D. Okay, so not just only working with the hospital, but also try to work with the community too. Yeah, okay. So I have only a few more minutes here. So I would like to go back to my slide. I, what I'm, my experience is, I just only focus on the hospital context only. So when we mentioned about, I'm sorry, when we rush, people in rush. So, so listen to the client voice. If you still remember of the three by four um, diagrams, you will heard that that we community linkages is the same like you mentioned that we bring in clients to talk about experiences that uh, uh, of stigma discrimination that's happened to them in the health facility and what is the impact to their own life and we also create a kind of self stigma reduction program or srp program in the hospitals you will listen it more on the other days. It's about the program that reduce the internalized stigma or self stigma. So it's mean you have to organize activity among the group of people living with HIV and AIDS who are uh, going to the treatment in your hospitals. You can run down, the, uh, run the self stigma program. This is another way to involve uh, the communities. And then, yes, we talk about strengthening knowledge and understanding of right mechanisms. So there we involve NGOs and religious leaders, if you need it, and other things, providing them about the rights of they themselves to get protected if they are, uh, was abused or was discriminated, even from, uh, from the hospital staff or even from the other other uh, settings. So let them know that they have the right under the project and uh, bring them, bring, bring their voice to the communities, to the hospital and find the solutions. The last one is the example is they are also being part of the training in the hospital. In the implementation levels, we have a, a joint team between NGOs and healthcare providers to provide training in the hospitals. If you, if you, if you can imagine like there are 30 uh, healthcare staff in the training rooms, there are a few small uh, numbers of communities, but the few, more, few numbers of communities voice will create a different perspective because uh, a different point of view to the training. So it's create a lot of uh, fruitful discussions to make people uh, in the healthcare worker understand from the point of view of the community. So this is another way of, of um, involving communities into the, 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 the trainings or the stigma reduction programs in the hospitals. It's depend on you to, to um, apply it in your context. You, is it, if it possible, involve them in the in the training. If it's not, doing a kind of special specific program with them, and linkages with other mechanism at in the in your countries, and should uh, the uh, should be a good strategies. So I would like to 
finals is my final slide is the challenges. The challenges is like you mentioned that something sometimes it's happened in the when we talk about community participation, it's a good concept and a good strategy to talk that impress other people. But in the real world, it's a challenges. It's not e happen easily because um, if you consider in Thai context, when you if you bring in uh, a client to talk with the medical staff in the hospital, with the our our cultures. Um, Doctor, uh, you know, perceived as a high class levels, uh, high authority. So it's it's not easy to create a safe space for um, community participant, especially a client, to speak directly what they thought. Or well, even though some uh, challenges is about involving them, it means you have to create uh, enabling support for them. You may need to support them on the traveling, so you have a cost to pay. But sometimes it's happened that um, when you plan, you didn't um, providing a, enough cost for community to to do the activity. So this is a kind of challenges in in the, the point of view, in my point of view. So this is all for the my 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 part about community participations. So I'm sorry, we don't have um, time for questions, but we have 15 minutes for taking a break. I think it's better to stop the, the first part of this um, session before uh, going to the second part. So if you allow me, I will stop with this and then let you go to the take a rest for five, for 10 minutes if it possible and they will come back to the next sessions are there any objection no okay so take a break maybe you you come up with um, fresh idea questions or comments and then we'll we stop hello are you there anyone back since you turn off your <clears throat> video, so I cannot guess. <laughs> we still encourage you to open your micro, uh, your your video if you feel comfortable. But if it if you feel uncomfortable, it's okay. So we'll start to we'll start the we we presume that everyone is on right now. So Kun Tipsukon, please. Okay. okay. Welcome to Module 8, Growth of Office of Disease Prevention and Control, Ministry of Public Health, and Scaling Up Stigma and Discrimination in their respective areas. We will present this video by Mrs. Nim Anong Thai Jalern. She is Public Health Technical Officer, a senior professional level working for the Office of Disease Prevention and Control, Songkhla Province, the south of Thailand. Please welcome. สวัสดีค่ะดิฉันนิมนนท์ไทยเจริญนักวิชาการสาธารณสุขชำนาญการพิเศษเป็นตัวแทนของสำนักงานป้องกันควบคุมโรคที่ 12 ผลการดำเนินงานเพื่อลดการติดตาและเลือกปฏิบัติที่เกี่ยวข้องกับ <coughs> นิเทศและประเมินผลด้านควบคุมโรคมีพื้นที่ในการรับผิดชอบเจ็ดจังหวัดภาคใต้ตอนล่างของประเทศไทยได้แก่จังหวัดตรังพัทลุงสตูลส
เว็บรีพอร์ตของสำนักงานหลักประกันสุขภาพแห่งชาติจากกราฟจะเห็นได้ว่าแท่งสีเขียวหมายถึงผู้ที่ติดเชื้อให้ได้วีพบว่ามีแนวโน้มเพิ่มขึ้นจาก 28,000 คนในปี2016เป็น 32,000 คนในปี2020แท่งสีฟ้าหมายถึงผู้ที่ติดเชื้อให้ไตวีได้รับยาต้านไวรัสโดยเฉลี่ยประมาณ 20,000 คนในแต่ละปีแท่งสีเหลืองหมายถึงผู้ที่เสียชีวิตจาก h อวีมีแนวโน้มเพิ่มขึ้นจาก 7,000 คนในปี2016ถึงปี2019เพิ่มขึ้นเป็น 9,000 คนส่วนในปี2020มีแนวโน้มลดลงเหลือเพียง 5,000 คนแท่งสีม่วงหมายถึงผู้ที่ติดเชื้อรายใหม่มีแนวโน้มลดลงจากปี2016มีจำนวน 1,400 คนเหลือเพียง 1,100 คนในปี2020การดำเนินงานของสอสอ12มีเป้าหมายตามแผนยุทธศาสตร์ชาติปี 2,560 ถึง 2,573 ดังนี้ลดการติดเชื้อ HIV รายใหม่ให้น้อยกว่า 1,000 คนต่อปีลดการเสียชีวิตให้น้อยกว่า 4,000 คนต่อปีและลดการติดตามและเลือกปฏิบัติให้ลดลงถึงร้อยละ90ต่อปีผู้บริหารสกล12นายแพทย์ภูมโมกอัมพวารองผู้อำนวยการสกล12ได้มองเห็นและสนับสนุนในเรื่องของการลดการตีตาว่าเป็นเหมือนภูเขาน้ำแข็งที่ซ่อนอยู่ด้านล่างเป็นปัญหาอุปสรรคของคนไข้ที่จะเข้าถึงบริการในการเข้ารับยาถ้าเราดูแลในส่วนนี้ได้ดีก็จะทำให้การยุติปัญหาเอดได้ดีขึ้นงานลดการตีตาเป็นงานที่เรามุ่งหวังให้ครอบคลุมมากที่สุดการลดการตีตาลงได้ประชาชนก็จะเข้าสู่ระบบการคัดกรองมากขึ้นความกลัวที่จะรู้ผลตนเองสามารถยอมรับผลเลือดที่ออกมายอมรับสถานะของตนเองและยอมรับการรักษาในที่สุดสคลสิบสองอยากทำเรื่องลดการตีตาเพราะมองเห็นว่าสถานการณ์การเลือกปฏิบัติในสถานบริการสุขภาพในเขต12ยังมีทัศนคติในเชิงลบต่อผู้ติดเชื้อให้ได้วีซึ่งพบมากถึงร้อยละ83จากการสำรวจข้อมูลลดการติดตาและเลือกปฏิบัติในปี2562ดังนั้นสคล12จึงอยากเป็นส่วนหนึ่งในการผลักดันเรื่องลดการติดตาเพื่อบรรลุเป้าหมายยุทธศาสตร์ชาติจึงมีการอบรมลดการติดตาและเลือกปฏิบัติในสถานบริการสุขภาพทั้งเจ็ดจังหวัดภาคใต้ตอนล่างและมีโรงพยาบาลที่นำเรื่องของการอบรมไปขยายต่อในบุคลากรของโรงพยาบาลถึงร้อยละ90ด้วยงบประมาณของโรงพยาบาลเองมีความคิดเห็นที่แสดงต่อ,อการจัดอบรมลดการติดตาและเลือกปฏิบัติของคลอ12ของสำนักง,งานสาธารณสุขจังหวัดตรังคุณพิมพ์วราภุชงปทุมมาศให้ความเห็นว่าปัญหาเรื่องการตีตาและเลือกปฏิบัติเป็นปัญหาเรื้อรังที่ไม่มีองค์กรใดจัดการกับปัญหานี้อย่างเป็นรูปธรรมและปัญหาเรื่องเรื่องลดการตีตาและเลือกปฏิบัติที่มีสำนักง,งานป้องกันควบคุมโรคที่12มาจัดอบรมให้พบว่าเป็นกระบวนการเบื้องต้นที่เกิดขึ้นอย่างเป็นรูปธรรมแล้วความคิดเห็นของคุณอภิษาสุวรรณรัตน์โรงพยาบาลจนะหลังจากที่ได้รับการอบรมเรื่องลดการติดตาและเลือกปฏิบัติเจ้าหน้าที่ที่เข้าร่วมอบรมมีความรู้ความเข้าใจเกี่ยวกับเรื่องท่าทางคําพูดที่แสดงออกมาในทางบวกหรือทางลบโดยไม่มีความตั้งใจก็สามารถปรับเปลี่ยนให้บุคลากรมีความเข้าใจไปในทิศทางที่เป็นทางบวกได้วิทยากรมีความรู้ความสามารถสามารถเป็นตัวอย่างในการจัดกิจกรรมและนํามาจัดอบรมในโรงพยาบาลต่อไปในเรื่องของการลดการติดตาและเลือกปฏิบัติเจ้าหน้าที่สามารถอธิบายถึงเหตุผลให้ผู้บังคับบัญชาในจังหวัดได้รับทราบถึงปัญหาของงานเอชที่เกี่ยวข้องกับพฤติกรรมของกลุ่มประชากรเป็นส่วนหนึ่งที่ทำให้เจ้าหน้าที่มีความเข้าใจเรื่องลดการติดตาและเลือกปฏิบัติได้มากขึ้นการดำเนินงานเรื่องลดการตีตาและเลือกปฏิบัติในเขต12มีการสำรวจลดการตีตาและเลือกปฏิบัติในจังหวัดสงขาทุก2ปีและสำนักง,งานป้องกันควบคุมโรคที่2สำรวจเพิ่มเติม
ในจังหวัดพัทลุงนราธิวาสมีโครงการเรื่ององค์กรห่วงใยใส่ใจเอ็ดในที่ทํางานมีการอบรมหลักสูตรส่งเสริมบริการสุขภาพที่ปราศจากการติดตาและเลือกปฏิบัติที่เกี่ยวกับเฮชวีมีการสนับสนุนในการจัดศูนย์บริการชุมชนทั้ง7จังหวัดให้ได้มาตรฐานโดยมีการดําเนินงานเลื่อนลดการติดตาร่วมด้วยการดําเนินงานของลดการติดตาและเลือกปฏิบัติมีตั้งแต่ปี2556ในเรื่องของการลนนลงปีพศ2558ถึงปี2562มีการสมรวจลดการติดตาในจังหวัดสงขลาทุก2ปีและมีการทำการดำเนินการเรื่องการสำรวจเพิ่มขึ้นในจังหวัดตรังพัทลุงสตูลปัตตานีในบางปีส่วนในปี2559ถึงปี2561มีการจัดประกวดองค์กรห่วงใยดูแลใส่ใจเอดในที่ทำงานปี2561มีการจัดอบรมเรื่องลดการตีตาเลือกปฏิบัติครั้งที่1ปี2562มีการจัดการอบรมลดการตีตาและเลือกปฏิบัติในครั้งที่2ปี2563จัดอบรมลดการตีตาและเลือกปฏิบัติและเซลสติกมาในเรื่องในครั้งที่3สรุปการสำรวจลดการตีตาและเลือกปฏิบัติในเขต12พบว่าในด้านของผู้ให้บริการสุขภาพในด้านที่1ความกังวลการติดเชื้อของบุคลากรเจ้าหน้าที่มีแนวโน้มลดลงเรื่อยๆจากร้อยละ79ในปี2558ลดลงเหลือร้อยละ41ในปี2562ด้านที่2ทัศนคติเชิงลบต่อผู้ติดเชื้อไฮเดวีมีแนวโน้มลดลงจากร้อยละ85ในปี2558ล,ลดลงเหลือร้อยละเจ็ดสิบหกในปี2562ในเรื่องของการป้องกันตัวเองมากกว่าปกติระหว่างการให้บริการผู้ติดเชื้อไทวีลดลงเช่นกันจากร้อยละ65ในปี2558ลดลงเหลือร้อยละ44ในปี2562การสังเกตและเลือกปฏิบัติระหว่างการให้บริการผู้ติดเชื้อไทวีหรือผู้ป่วยเอดพบว่าร้อยละ19ในปี2558ลดลงเหลือร้อยละ14ในปี2562ด้านที่5ในเรื่องของการสังเกตเห็นเจ้าหน้าที่ไม่เต็มใจที่จะให้บริการหรือดูแลผู้ป่วยกลุ่มประชากรหลักที่เสี่ยงต่อการติดเชื้อไทวีในช่วง12เดือนที่ผ่านมาพบว่ามีร้อยละ22ในปี2558ลดลงเหลือร้อยละ17ในปี2562และในส่วนที่ในส่วนที่เกี่ยวข้องกับผู้ติดเชื้อพบว่าการมีประสบการณ์การถูกเลือกปฏิบัติระหว่างการรับบริการสุขภาพเนื่องจากเป็นผู้ติดเชื้อในช่วง12ปีที่ผ่านมา12เดือนที่ผ่านมาพบว่ามีแนวโน้มเพิ่มขึ้นจากร้อยละเจ็ดการเคยมีประสบการณ์ถูกเลือกปฏิบัติการรับบริการสุขภาพเนื่องจากเป็นผู้ติดเชื้อเทวีในช่วง12เดือนที่ผ่านมาพบว่ามีแนวโน้มเพิ่มขึ้นจากร้อยละ7ในปี2558เป็นร้อยละ13ในปี2562การเคยตัดสินใจไม่ไปรับบริการสุขภาพโรงพยาบาลเนื่องจากมีการตีตาตนเองในช่วง12เดือนที่ผ่านมาโดยลดลงเหลือร้อยละ16จากปี2558เป็นร้อยละ23เหลือร้อยละ7ในปี2562ร้อยละของผู้ติดเชื้อไฮเดวีและผู้ป่วยเอดที่เคยถูกตีตาและเลือกปฏิบัติที่เกี่ยวข้องกับอนามัยเจริญพันธุ์มีแนวโน้มลดลงจากปี2558จากร้อยละ25เหลือร้อยละ13ในปี2562ผู้ติดเชื้อไทวีเคยถูกบังคับให้ยุติการตั้งครรภ์มีแนวโน้มลดลงเหลือร้อยละ3ในปี2562ซึ่งพบว่าการสำรวจการรายงานมีแนวโน้มที่ดีขึ้นในเรื่องของการดําเนินงานการสนับสนุนองค์กรต่างๆให้เข้าร่วมประกวดดูแลห่วงใยใส่ใจป้องกันเอดในที่ทํางานตั้งแต่ปี2559ซึ่งมีองค์กรทั้งด้านสาธารณาสุขด้านองค์กรปกครองส่วนท้องถิ่นมีความสนใจได้รับเลือกให้ไปนําเสนอในระดับประเทศในปี2560มีองค์กรต่างๆด้านสาธารณาสุขด้านการศึกษาด้านการปกครองส่งท้องถิ่นได้รับรางวัลชนะเลิศในระดับเขตและมีองค์กรด้านสาธารณาสุขที่ได้รับรางวัลรองชนะเลิศระดับประเทศและยังมีองค์กรต่างๆเข้าร่วมประกวด
้ในปี2561และมีหลายองค์กรได้รับรางวัลชนะเลิศในระดับเขต12ผลการดำเนินงานเรื่องการจัดอบรมลดการตีตาและเลือกปฏิบัติในเขต12ตั้งแต่ปี2560ถึงปี2564พบว่าสัดส่วนของโรงพยาบาลที่เข้าร่วมอบรมลดการตีตาและเลือกปฏิบัติมากที่สุดคือจังหวัดสงขลาเข้าร่วมถึง12โรงพยาบาลจากจำนวนทั้งหมด17โรงพยาบาลคิดเป็นสัดส่วนร้อยละ71จังหวัดที่เข้าร่วมอบรมรองลงมาคือจังหวัดสตูลร้อยละ67ยะลาร้อยละ57ตรังร้อยละ55และนาราธิวาสร้อยละ38พัทลุงร้อยละ33ปัตตานีร้อยละ21สคลมีการสนับสนุนงบประมาณให้แก่องค์กรสาธารณประโยชน์ด้านเอดในเขต12ตั้งแต่ปี2561ถึง2564ที่สนับสนุนในเรื่องของกิจกรรมลดการติดตาและเลือกปฏิบัติตั้งแต่ปี2561สนับสนุนหนึ่งโครงการจำนวน 15,000 บาทให้แก่อาสาสมัครชมรมเขาน้ำค้างอำเภอนาทวีจังหวัดสงขลาปี6 2562หนึ่งโครงการ 35,000 บาทนะคะแก่องค์กรอาสาสมัครชมรมเขาน้ำค้างอำเภอนาทวีจังหวัดสงขลาในปี2563 9โครงการ 270,000 บาทปี2564 2โครงการจำนวน 45,000 บาทในปี2561ถึงปี2563มีการพัฒนาศักยภาพบุคลากรในเรื่องของการลดการติดตาและเลือกปฏิบัติที่เกี่ยวข้องกับ HIV ในหน่วยบริการสุขภาพปี2563มีการอบ,อบรมหลักสูตรส่งเสริมสถานบริการสุขภาพที่ปราศจากลดการติดตาและเลือกปฏิบัติมีการสนับสนุนในเรื่องของการพัฒนาศูนย์บริการชุมชนให้มีการเป็นศูนย์บริการที่มีมาตรฐานโดยการลงเยี่ยมประเมินให้มีความสามารถในการเข้าถึงกลุ่มประชากรหลักในการทำงานเชิงรุกเนื่องจากกลุ่มประชากรหลักเป็นกลุ่มที่มีการติดเชื้อและแพร่เชื้อสูงในการทำงานเรื่องของการพัฒนาศูนย์บริการชุมชนที่อยู่ใกล้บ้านทำให้ผู้รับบริการสามารถเข้าหากลุ่มเสี่ยงได้ง่ายรวดเร็วรวมทั้งผู้ที่ให้บริการก็สามารถเข้าถึงในเรื่องของการค้นหาโดยใช้มาตรการ r i s r e c r u i t e s t r e t a i n เพื่อที่จะให้เข้าสู่ระบบการดูแลรักษาที่ดีอย่างรวดเร็วต่อไปซึ่งจะนำไปสู่ปัจจัยในการยุติปัญหาเอดในชุมชนได้เป็นอย่างดีมีการสนับสนุนในเรื่องของพื้นที่ที่ทำในเขต12ทุกจังหวัดตั้งแต่จังหวัดสงขลาตรังพัทนุงสตูลยะลานาราธิวาสปัตตานีเป้าหมายลดการติดตาและเลือกปฏิบัติในพื้นที่เขต12มองเห็นความสำคัญของทีมสุขภาพที่ควรช่วยกันขยับปีกผีเสื้อไปพร้อมๆกันทั้งในชุมชนภาครัฐภาคประชาสังคมอสมอรอพอสอตอจึงสามารถทำให้ผีเสื้อบินไปได้ไกลทำให้เรื่องลดการติดตาและเลือกปฏิบัติเพิ่มขึ้นได้ถึงร้อยละเก้าสิบไม่มีการรังเกียจและเลือกปฏิบัติสวัสดีค่ะ Okay go back to you คุณทิพย์สุกล Anyone have any questions Okay I'm new at the game Sorry I'm for please accuse us for the the problems that uh, get stuck for a while So I think this um, the the video that you have seen It's about the implementation of the office, the office in the regional office of Thailand. So we also have to get speaker here, the director of the office, and then Kun Nim Anong to stand by there. Okay, let's let's ask Kun. L'oratrice qui a parlé dans la vidéo est aussi avec nous ici, juste au milieu de l'écran. Yes, Kun Nim Anong, you can start. De ne pas avoir à faire une pause entre entre vidéos. Elle a parlé trop vite. Elle a parlé si vite que j'ai pas pu interpréter parce qu'il y avait qu'il y avait aucun espace ou aucune pause de 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 traduction. Excuse me, sir. Can you hear me now? Yes, Uncle Go. I hear you. Yeah. We are in. Thank you. You have you a question? If you don't mind, we would like to learn what we missed when the interpretation line is uh, uh, temporarily interrupted. Okay. We would like to hear it again in English. Okay. Okay. We'll try to find a way to solve this problem later. Thank you, Uncle Go. I'm sorry about that. Thank you, sir. 
อนนี้ทางสคอรทางท่านผู้อำนวยการทางพี่นิ่มมีอะไรจะพูดอะไรครับ Do you have anything to say? The director from the Office of Disease Prevention and Control. As for our office, the Office of Disease Prevention and Control, we have attached great importance to S and D reduction. We have partnered with NGOs and relevant agencies to reduce S and D. As for to end A, we need to work on S and D reduction. Above all. Finally, to reduce S and D, communities should be the key agent that plays the role a role in this matter. The most important thing for the government sector is to provide support, support for the NGOs and the general public. They should strengthen them, encouraging them to ask to request funding for local authorities. To get some funding to support their efforts, and when CSOs are strong, when the general public are strong, if local government organizations are strong, it is it would be easy to end S N D, and we can end our AIDS easily. Finally, the government sector will be just a supporter, and all the efforts taken. Do you know private sector should be involved? For example, like a drop-in center, prescription, and this will um, facilitate access to medication. I'm sorry, I'm from Chiang Mai. I didn't hear, but I guess Home. that the, the the director already speak, and then right now you can. Uh, Um, have a questions or comments to the office of uh, prevention and disease prevention and control. You have any comments on disease uh, and 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 questions? I'm sorry for the interruptions in the video presentations, but to wrap up is I think um um. Kunimano try to mention about the situation of HIV in in uh, southern area that the the her office is the um, 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 uh, office that responsible for the situations, and then from the early beginnings, um, um, office of in Songkra that base in Songkra is the um, red areas of uh, hit hard by HIV too, so, and then um, they start with the measurements. To do the surveys and understand the situation, and followed by the pilot program to start um, stigma discrimination implementation in some hospitals. A part of that, um, the office also providing technical support and financial support to NGOs to do the um, S and D activities out of the hospitals in collaboration. Um, to reduce a stigma and discrimination reduction in 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 South, Southern Thailands, and the office also support the government office to uh, reduce in other settings out of health settings only, but in other settings to promote um, the stigma reduction too. So this is roughly so. Um, this is the the way that um, the government implements that um, the the office in the in Bangkok the MOPH also have um, this 12 office in in 12 region to providing technical support and financial support to the provincial office supports to the hospital to implement the stigma reduction three by four program. That is lovely. So do you have any kind of questions or comments? Please go ahead. Yes, Anissa, you raise your hand. Yes, Dr. Anissa from Pakistan. Um, yes, please. Yes, um, uh, the success story of Thailand was very impressive for us. That you manage a discriminating, uh, manage reduction in the stigma and discrimination related to HIV. My question to the officer is: What was the most important challenge you faced while doing all this in the past 10 years, and uh, which action? Uh, uh, Was the most important one for you, and which led you to the desired objectives? 
which single action was the most outstanding amongst others? Okay. Can you, if I understand your question is about um, the most challenges of the role and responsibility of the, the office in the past 10 years and the outstanding action that's solving that problems. Am I understand right? Yes, okay. Go to you, the office couldn't even know Mako or our directors. You have any response? Please. As for the challenges, we think the situation in Southern Thailand are not very good. So we we have focused on communities. We approach communities. We, you know, allow all sectors and parties, all stakeholders. We want to involve them in the working by providing them with financial support. And we allocated budget money to CSO. As for government sector, we focus on hospitals to allow them to understand the key population with our SND. Want to make sure that there is no uh, SND in healthcare facilities. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Me. Uh, maybe, maybe I will slow down a little bit because we have to use um, interpretation channels. So we'll at least allow the interpreters to take a break, take a brief and then switch the channel. Sorry. If we can speak slowly a bit. Yeah. Well, any other comments? Idea questions? If you still remember from the video presentations, um, I think the um, office are uh, providing the technical support to the hospitals and then supporting uh, the NGOs to do the um, um, providing financial support to do the SD reduction activities out of hospital areas. So, this is the role. So when I have a chance to talk with Kunim Manong, Kunim Manong also mentioned about when we, when we organize a country system of monitoring. So it's maybe uh, a little bit um, challenges for the local context to feed in um, measurements, uh, information due to in southern areas, there are lots of community, different community. So some provinces, there are lots of um, Islamic or Muslim communities. So in their cultural context, sometimes it's not convenient for them to do activities in, in a set of time that um, manage or set up by the central area. So I think the ideas that Kunim Anong chair is about decentralization to the office in the regions. So the office the reach in the region can understand the situations and then help their hospitals to create a better strategy to fit in with the local context. I think the idea of this uh, thing is quite um, impressed me. And, and I think it will be a next in a future direction in Thailand that the, the, the local office or the uh, regional office can, you know, uh, adjust uh, the timeline, the schedules uh, that can providing uh, uh, um, uh, good support for the hospitals. I'm not sure whether in your country, do you have this kind of structures in your country? the national bodies and the regional bodies and the provincial bodies, yeah, right? We do have uh, such structures so we can involve them. So, Uncle Go, since you are lieutenant, you are not working in hospitals areas. Uh, you have any thought, any idea when, when because um, Kunni Manong also mentioned about DIC or drop-in centers that they work with. So the drop-in centers also work with the people who use- I have to leave the meeting. The interpreter has to leave the meeting, sorry. Yes, Uncle Go, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, 
to be honest, I'm I'm not working at the hospital nor step of the hospital. So uh, the present discussion is beyond my friends. Uh, so some, in some cases, I couldn't I couldn't understand very well because uh, you are in hospital. So uh, I have to compare my recent conditions and job and opportunity the environment uh, in Myanmar whenever I have already reached beyond my reach. So I'm also studying your discussion and I have no special idea to give here. So, but I'm afraid uh, I don't want to be a disturbance to this meeting. So I'm trying to be a good learner Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your appreciate your effort. Thank you. And the, are there any other comments or questions to the office? Well, if there is no questions, so go back to Songkra. Directors and Kunimanong, do you have the last word to say to the, the participants? Okay, seems like um, we have uh, technical problems, so I didn't hear anything. But anyway, I'll thank you, say thank you to um, um, the director and Kunimanong for participating and giving a um, speak to the participant. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, P. Niwat, and also the director and the team from the uh, Department of Disease Control uh, 12 Songkla, uh, the Office of uh, Disease Prevention Control. So before we end today, I would like to uh, provide some information related to next week. So next week, uh, also, we will start in one stay. So next week will be three days of the training. Uh, we would like to request participants to have a two device, the same like today. There will be some exercise related to uh, by using a two device. So we encourage all the part uh, distinguished participants to have a two device. Uh, for next week training. Also, if anything uh, that you want to clarify, you want to know, uh, please send the email that we have already given. And also, we would like to remind again to uh, take the pretest that have already sent to all of you to your email. So I would like to say special thanks to the uh, distinguished colleague from uh, Mauritania because we just realized that the, the time zone in Mauritania is, is very early compared to uh, Thailand. So we, we, we give special thanks to you and your, uh, uh, your colleague. So I think uh, today, uh, this is the second day of the training. Uh, thank you for your active participation. Uh, so we will meet you um, again next week.